Hi everybody, I'm Juliana and in this video we are going to learn the three main types of contaminant transport and how they act together. It is extremely important to identify mechanisms that control the potential impact of a contaminant on the environment, and one of the most critical is the transport mechanism. The three main types of contaminant transport are advection, diffusion, and dispersion. In this video, we will demonstrate how a contaminant will be transported through the soil, using an aquifer as the main example. Advective transport is the movement of contaminants with flowing water. An easy way to understand this is to think about people in a moving walkway in the airport. They don't have to move, and still they will be taken to their destination at the speed of the walkway. It happens exactly the same way with contaminants inside the soil. Imagine a sand aquifer with water flowing through its particles. Consider that we have a contaminant source that reaches the aquifer. This contaminant will flow through the soil at the same velocity as the groundwater. The mass of contaminant transported by advection per unit area per time is defined as mass flux and is given by this equation. Looking at our aquifer, we can see that this max flux will depend on the porosity of the soil, the groundwater velocity, and the concentration of contaminants in the source. Knowing that porosity times velocity is the Darcy velocity, we can change our equation to this one, where the Darcy velocity depends on the soil hydraulic conductivity and the hydraulic gradient. So, we can conclude that if we don't have any flow inside our aquifer, we would not have movement of the contaminant by advection. But it doesn't mean that we are not going to have any movement. When we don't have flow, our contaminant can be transported by diffusion. That is the second mechanism we are going to see today. To better understand how diffusion transport works, imagine that you just came to work in the morning with a delicious hot coffee in your hands. When you enter your office, the people sitting closer to the door can smell your coffee almost immediately. But your colleague that sits in the back of the room will take a while to smell it. This happens because the coffee particles travel through the air from the highest concentration to the lower concentration. It's the same thing with contaminants. So let's see our aquifer again. The movement of the contaminant will happen from points with high chemical potential to points with low chemical potential. It means that even without the flow, the contaminant will move from the source to the point with less concentration. So if we don't need flow for diffusion to happen, can we have diffusion in the opposite direction as a flow? Yes, we can. Going back to our walkway, it would be like walking in the opposite direction to the walkway's movement. Just to get out of the crowd. If the speed is slow, it is easy to walk against it. But as the speed increases, people will decide to stay in the crowd instead of fighting against the high speed of the walkway. If we think of our aquifer, it would happen the same thing when the source of contaminants is in the opposite direction of the water flow. This is called a hydraulic trap. The same way as it happens in the walkway, with lower groundwater velocity, more contaminants will pass through the soil in direction to the aquifer. The diffusive transport mass flux is given by this equation where we will have the soil porosity, the effective diffusion coefficient, and the concentration gradient. When we have a high flow in the aquifer, there is a third transport mechanism that needs to be considered, the mechanical dispersion. The movement of contaminants occurs when the flow of the groundwater is influenced by local variations. So now, let's imagine a school bus arriving to the museum. The students are coming out of the bus and going to the entrance, but there are a lot of people in the square in front of the museum. All the students will arrive at the entrance, but at different times, as they move their way through the crowd. In our aquifer, things are similar. Soil particles are not uniform, and there are locations where the particles are closer together and spots where they are further apart. While moving, our contaminants have lateral or longitudinal spreading and transverse spreading. Usually, the transverse spreading is 30% of the lateral spreading. Although this movement is completely different from diffusion, for practical purposes, the dispersion max flux can be mathematically modeled like diffusion, as you can see in this equation, where dmd is the coefficient of mechanical dispersion. 
This coefficient is a function of the dispersivity and the groundwater velocity. Cool! Now we know that a divection and dispersion need flowing water for the movement to happen, and that diffusion will happen even without the flow, since we have higher concentration in one of the points. So, can they happen at the same time? The answer is yes. All transport mechanisms can happen at the same time. Imagine that we are back in the airport walkway. We have an advection transport happening when we stay standing up and moving with the walkway velocity. But if I decide to walk in the same direction as the walkway, my velocity will be larger and I will be walking from the point of high concentration to the point of low concentration. It means we will have two mechanisms happening at the same time, advection and diffusion. If the walkway is full of people and they are not necessarily in the right side, I will have to go through some of them, going faster in places where they are spread and slower where people are closer together. If still I manage to walk in the same direction as the walkway and through all these people, the three mechanisms are happening together, advection, diffusion, and dispersion. These concepts are really important when modeling how different contaminants will be transported through the soil, and you will need to consider all of them when producing your own models. Now that we learned about the contaminant transport mechanisms, the next step is to learn about the contaminant retardation mechanisms. Thanks for watching!